Welcome to Grandad's Reviews. In the previous video I compared the Fuji X-T3 to the X-T1 um, and I've had a lots of really good comments on that video so I thought I'd do an update um, using some of the suggestions and comments that's been uh, sent over to me. Also I thought I'd do a couple of other tests. So I've done an autofocus test to see the difference in speed and I've also done the tests that's been suggested uh, which was uh, the high ISO in low light and I'm going to down sample the X-T3s to the same size as the X-T1 and see what the difference there is and I may even up sample the X-T1s to the X-T3 and see what difference that makes and also I will actually put the raw files into Capture One uh, just to give a different view in a different software so I've been out, took some photos, done a few tests and now I'll show you the results so I thought I would try an autofocus test. So this is the X-T1 with a subject, my wife, walking straight towards me with a single point, continuous autofocus, uh, standard size, and we'll just see how it uh, performs. As you can see, it's uh, pretty good hit rate. And when we got to the end, it was 83% uh, success. So here's the X-T3, exactly the same. It's the 18-55 to kit lens. And just a steady walk towards you. Try to get it to walk at uh, a similar pace. Did find that the X-T1 buffer filled up a lot quicker than the X-T3 and it took a lot longer to clear down as well. Um, that's why I got a, um, more frames out of the uh, X-T3. And so when we get to the end... We got a 89.5 success rate. And then I did a tracking one, so I've got the X-T1 on tracking. And just go out my wife to zigzag, not too quickly, just a, a walking zigzag towards me, just to see how how good the XT1 would track. And again, I found the uh, frames per second dropped quite heavily on the XT1, and the buffer filled quick. But we're going I ended up with an 87.5 percent success rate. And we try the X-T3. The X-T3 was at low continuous frame rate, whereas the X-T1 had to be on high to try and get the frame rate reasonably the same. Um, and I did, I mean, wife probably walked a bit further in some of the cases. But at the end of this one, we've got a few misses near the end. And it were only a 72% success rate. So I think I may end up doing that uh, test again, but it was interesting. Another comment was to actually downsample the X-T3 to the X-T1 size and to upsample the X-T1 to the X-T3 uh, and just have a look if that makes a difference to the noise in the image. So that's what I've done and also put in a couple of comparison at the right at the end here, not putting down what the ISOs are just to see what the difference is.
Right, one of the other comments I had on my other XT1 versus XT3 video uh, was to take some low light high ISO images. So I went out in the evening, took some shots at 800, 1600, 3200, 6400 and 12800 on both cameras. Also, one of the comments was zooming into 100% on the XT3 what was showing up the noise rather than not zooming in quite as much keeping the zoom ratio about the same so we'll have a look at that as well so quick look through the actual images first these are the xt1s we'll do them at a hundred percent all the same so that was the 200 iso just to uh, show how slow the actual shutter speed was and how dark it was so 800 1600 3200, 6400, and then on the XT1, the 12800, it doesn't do in RAW, only in JPEG, so it's not really a, a fair comparison, but I will show it. And that's the uh, 12800. And on the XT3, zoomed in at 100, that's uh, 200 ISO, 800. 1600, 3200, 6400, and 12800. And I've done nothing to these, these as they are imported into Capture One. So I'll use Capture One this time rather than Lightroom. Now, if we go back to XT1 and then compare it against the XT3 at 200. First off, we'll bow them both at 100%. And I think the focus was a little bit off on the X-T3, but noise-wise, yeah, you, you can't really tell the difference. So if we take the X-T3 down to 67%, which is as close as I can get in Capture One. Yeah, noise-wise, they're pretty much identical. So we do... 800, and we have the 800, 100% both first, and not a great deal in it, probably you can see the noise a little bit more in the X-T3, if we take that down to 67%, and basically they look the same. The actual uh, exposure is slightly different. But apart from that, they do look the same. So if we go to 1600, and both at 100%. And we'll take the... You can definitely see more noise in the X-T3, especially in this area here and in the really dark shadows. But if I take the... XT3 down to 67%. And yeah, I would say they do look very similar. And let's do 3200. This is again both at 100%. And yeah, you can see a lot more noise in the XT3. We'll drop that down the 67% which is as close as I can get and yeah I'd have to agree they do look very similar at that let's do 64 100% and XT3 falling apart take it down to 67% and yeah they're very similar Finally, we do the 12,800. I say the XT1 has to be a JPEG. Make them all up to 100%. And they're both pretty bad, though the noise reduction on the JPEG is a the job there. Take that out of 67. Yeah, they're very much the same. But as I say, that's pixel peeping. If you're going to look at them yourself, you're going to look at them either full screen or at 100%. It 
which next to one is that but you're going to have them like that basically and both pretty good I hope you found this video uh, of interest and uh, may help you with deciding whether to upgrade from the XT1 to XT3 if you think I've done something incorrectly in testing certain art things on both cameras please leave a comment below and I'll revisit that and see if I can change anything if there's any other things you want to test in between the two leave those in the comments as well and keep an eye out for any upcoming videos on my channel hit the subscribe button hit the bell button and we'll see you later